Good evening and welcome to tonight's stream. We are talking about candy corn. So welcome. <clears throat> Got to clear the throat there. Yeah, candy corn. We've been we've been talking a lot about candy corn on this channel in general. I've been reviewing weird candy corn. We did uh the tailgate candy corn. It was uh hot dog candy corn and hamburger candy corn. Just when you think candy corn couldn't get more disgusting, you have hot dog candy corn, uh, popcorn candy corn, fruit punch candy corn, vanilla ice cream candy corn. I mean, they make a, they make a candy corn of for every you know occasion, right? But what is candy corn? I think we need to sit here and discuss what exactly candy corn is, where it comes from, how do we feel about candy corn? And what's the deal? What's the deal with candy corn? Let's find out. To help us along the way, we're going to go take a trip to Atlas Obscura, one of my favorite websites. You know, Atlas Obscura, when they hit, they hit. And when they don't hit, they don't hit. And Atlas Obscura, they just, they know what's up. What's up? Robbie Bloodshed and oh sorry we had a lag on the comments now I see see here Angus how are you sir Angus says that there's Easter candy corn too DLW says the most disgusting thing about corn is when it leaves your body maybe <laughs> Robbie says I love candy corn I love those pumpkin candy corns even more though that's funny and Sahara is here you know I told Sahara today uh, she she does painting and whatnot. And I said, you know, she could do like a whole Bob Bob Ross thing, you know, if she wanted to on YouTube. And I, you know, I, I could totally imagine there being like a niche audience for watching somebody paint m minus the singing. And, you know, I, I like to when I see something I think is interesting, I like to call it out. So I really encourage Sahara to do that. I think I think it would be uh, really successful. She says the pumpkin candy corn is the best. There you go. Ace Von Johnson's in the house. He says, bro, I just bought a bag of pumpkin candy corns today. Love them. Wow. A lot more love for the candy corn than I thought. Okay. Happy. <laughs> happy trees. Happy trees. Happy candy corns. Happy candy corns. Um, Ace, I don't know if you saw that calendar invite I sent you. I sent you a calendar invite. I don't know if you have fried salted corn over there. It's delicious. Okay, uh, DLW, I believe you said you were in Argentina, but I know that in Peru, there's Peruvian giant corn, the giant Peruvian corn down in South America. That stuff is really interesting. Um, yeah, this here, I'm going to show you what I have. This is what I have left over, and I just reviewed this on the channel. This is um, really disgusting. As I said, for those who weren't here when I first popped on, this is hot dog, hamburger, popcorn, fruit punch, and vanilla ice cream. Candy corn is, is right here. <laughs> and I reviewed it. You know, I just realized I don't think I dropped the review. I think it's only on members only. I'll, I'll share. Maybe the Patreon's got to. I will share that with, with all of you. <laughs> it's really gross uh, for the most part. Um, <laughs> you'll, you know, it's funny. You'll make yourself sick just eating normal candy corn, let alone like gross tasting candy corn as well. Angus says, I like candy corn as I do not look at the dark variety. Looks like rotten teeth. You know, they call them witch's teeth as well. That's another name for uh candy corn brian is here how are you brian brian says i only like the candy corn that has the chocolate at the end yeah that one's a good one i believe they call that they call that harvest corn yeah okay ace ace got ace got the calendar but that's good we'll we'll do a little test to make sure we're copacetic and then we'll we'll record that willie wonka needs to settle down with these flavors says sahara uh dlw says i wonder if danzig is a candy corn person he sure loves black candy because it's so hard to find that's right I want someone to write a Danzig candy corn song. Candy! <laughs> candy corn! Ho, ho. No, how would it go? It'd be like, or maybe it'd be like, uh, you'd get some Gregorian chanting candy corn, Gregorian. 
can do, God can do, God. And then the drums come in, boom, 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 and then Danzig goes, can do, 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 It'd be like what you you'd have to fuse woe with corn. Quo! Quo! All right, enough of this. Enough of this. Okay, we're 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 gonna be here all night if we don't launch it. I'm not really smoking. This is a fake, this is a paper straw that I'm pretending is a cigarette. Um old habits, old habits. What can I say? I have not started smoking. I'm still 14 years off cigarettes, but you know, sometimes the the, the fingers uh what do they say? Idols fingers are the devil's plaything. <laughs> Devil's play. <laughs> I, you know, I, I listen. I'll, I'll do any. You know, they make a turkey dinner candy corn as well, which I have not tried. But I, you know, I would, I'd get down. I would get down. Candy corn with the chocolate at the end. Isn't that regular stool <laughs> specs of corn? Man, DLW always takes it to the dairy air. Always dirty black corn food. <laughs> See how the oh, we're gonna get the puns are coming out. See how the corn kills the blackest of the black candy corn, of course. Of course. Um, maybe I could okay, yeah. So Sahara now now see and listen, if I can do that with no shame, you could definitely sing. But you'll get listen, if you get your channel monetized and you sit there and you paint, I promise you, I, I guarantee you you will get a monetized YouTube channel. And, you know, it's all about watch hours. Views don't matter. If you notice on this channel, I don't get a lot of views, but my watch hours are really high. And that's what YouTube cares about. And you could do it. <laughs> yes, November Corning Fire. Speaking of November Corning Fire, we do have sour cream, <laughs> sour cream T-shirts. Yeah, of course, Twist of Corn. Oh, man, this is never going to end. As soon as someone brings up Danzig and whatever the topic is, we always get a fusion we always get a fusion of the things. All right. All right, guys, I, I have to ignore you momentarily or we're never going to get through this video and it's already 1021. All right. Let me share the screen. I'm sorry. I'm going to like burp everywhere why isn't this loading uh here we go here it is okay here's our article all right so we'll put that off to the side for just a minute <laughs> i got something to say i ate candy cone today uh, i like this one from angus i want candy go can yeah that's good if you're gonna corn corn with me and of course we got the corn kid i gotta tell you i am so stoked for that corn kid who you know corn is a very um sort of uh malevolent crop in general corn makes literally makes the world go round but it's a very malevolent crop for a lot of reasons i'm not going to get into that we're not going to get into that all tonight but I want to say I'm really happy for Tariq. I think it's Tariq is his name. Tariq the corn kid. I love that that kid has become the ambassador of corn. He just seems like such a, a lovely little boy who just loves corn. And now he's like the he's America's sweetheart darling for liking corn. And I'm just stoked for him. And I hope he rides that wave for as long as he can. I hope he gets a college fund off of being the corn kid. You know what I'm saying? That's like that stuff always happened. <laughs> we we are. Uh, we are candy corn. We are candy corn. Hammer of the corns, of course. You got to hammer the corns. Okay. So here's, okay. So before we, one last thing before we start here. What do I love about candy corn or, or sorry, what is my relationship with candy corn? Here's the deal. I We're getting a lot of different licenses as we were talking about. I think Sahara mentioned it. You know, you got like nerds. They have like nerd candy corn. When I see a real, they do Sour Patch Kids, right? When I see some interesting type of candy corn, I always pick up a bag just to try it. But the reality is, is that I can eat like a handful of candy corn and I'm good for the rest of the year. That's literally the truth. 
So it's like, I'm like, oh yeah, candy corn. And then I, you know, I eat a couple and I'm, I'm over it. I'm over it super quickly. I do have more tolerance for the witch's teeth, which is like the harvest corn with the chocolate, the chocolate corn that your classic candy corn, not a bit, not as big of a fan. Uh, what is it made out of? Obviously sugar, but like what kind of sugar, what kind of confectioner? Exactly. No. Uh, Daniel says it's the autumn mix. Mix, I guess, with the chocolate on it. Um, I still have yet to try the the Thanksgiving turkey dinner or candy corn, which is like my holy grail, which I will be keeping my eyes peeled for Thanksgiving time. So keep your eyes peeled for that review. And then there's going to be the great reset. I think I'm going to try and do a, a sugar cleanse come the new year because I've just been dying. Um, what's up? What's up, Dan? How you doing? Dan, thank you for joining the Patreon and thank you for your support, buddy. Really appreciate it. Welcome, welcome to tonight's show. Angus says, I can only eat very few at a time. Yeah, man. That's what I'm saying. Like, I, I'm over it super duper quickly. Like, I'm done. I'm done with the candy corn. I just can't, I can't uh handle it. I can't handle it too much, I should say. All right. America's least popular Halloween candy will never go away by Eric Grundhauser. And this is from October 20th, 2013. So it's almost 10 years old. This, uh, this, sh this, this, this article, Brian says, do you remember Jones soda? They made a Thanksgiving dinner. Set of soda. how could I forget? Have I tried that? No, I have not. But one day I will try mashed potato soda. Um, but yeah, Jones is still around. They're still doing weird weird stuff all right guys i'm gonna just like i'm gonna ignore the comments or i'm not ignoring you i just want to get get into the article and we'll, we'll go back to the comments the waxy little treat continues to sell by the billions that's billions with a b mind you that's crazy look at those things oh boy um okay and you know i mean this is the perfect time to cover a topic like this just to get us in by the way one last thing i want to say two things i want to say thing number one if you are on the patreon or a youtube member the second eerie vaughn part two has released so you can see here and this is where eerie and i begin to really talk about the misfits it's going to continue into part three and those will only be available exclusive and then part four will be available on youtube again so it incentivizes you to, to join the club and, and get some of the treats behind the veil. But like I said, part four is coming. No, sorry. Part three is coming. Part four will be YouTube public. Um, but yeah, in any case, part two has dropped today. That's number one thing I wanted to say. And number two thing I wanted to say is that I think I had an epiphany today. I think I made this up. I might not have made this up, but I think I might have made this up. I, I hereby decree from this day forward, that from September 1st to October 30th shall hereby be known as Halloween. You like that? Halloween, Like fall o -ween. Halloween, Huh? Huh? Is that too much of a dad pun? Is that crazy? Does it make sense? Have you heard that before? I don't think you heard that before. I think I made that up. I think I made that up. I'm proud of that. I'm, I'm pat patenting, patenting that right here on the channel. Yuma is in, I don't know if that's how you pronounce that. Y-M-A, Yuma. I'm just going to say Yuma because it makes sense to me. Uh, Yuma D says, I like the autumn mix pumpkins. <coughs> <coughs> Daniel says, I do vamp, vamptober from late August to early November. No, following. It rolls right off the tongue. Guy eating candy corn at the beach gets sand in it, falls in shoe. Shoe scuffs counter, point break corn. <laughs> uh, yes, yes. Okay. In any case, um, Halloween provides a calvacade. Calvacade. I like that word. Calvacade of whimsical scares for children and adults alike. But nothing chills the bones quite as much as the piles of candy corn left at the bottom of pumpkins and pillowcases across America. You have to wonder how much candy corn is left over after October 31st. It's got to be a lot. A 2010 market research survey found that candy corn was, in fact, the least popular Halloween candy of all those polled, despite being the consolation prize of confections, 
Candy corn is an ubiquitous part of Halloween and continues to sell billions of kernels each year. The waxy little treat may not be loved, but it's relentless domination of an under of an otherwise pleasant night of ghouls and ghosts is over 100 years in the making. So it's been around about 100 years. And this guy who wrote this article, he's a good writer. This is this is well done. This is a well done. Well, look at that. That's an advertisement here for candy corn. Oh, no, it's uh, yeah, no, it is. Candy corn has its roots in America's agricultural past. Something worth crowing for. Uh, and this is Golitz Buttersweet Candy Corn. Buttersweet candy corn sounds a lot better than, you know, candy corn. The true creator of candy corn is a mystery lost to time. But the first reports of the multicolored sugar drops began in the 1880s when the candy began appearing during the Halloween season. So actually, candy corn is about 140 years old. How about that? Soon after 142 years old, soon after the candy's sporadic appearance throughout the states, the, the Wonderly Candy Company began mass producing the treat under the name Chicken Feed. So before it was candy corn, it was called Chicken Feed. How about that? What's up, crazy white boy? He says, be more up in here what's happening and gouge away. That's right. Gouge away. Stay all day if you want to. Gouge away. Oh, man. As I've said in past, the Key Lime LaCroix, nothing hits harder. It just is good. That is good stuff. Angus says, my uncle with a few missing teeth used to put candy corn in the missing teeth area to scare our family. Ha ha. That is exactly what I would do. Your, you, uh, your uncle and me would have that in common if I was in this, a similar situation where I had missing teeth. It would be the perfect opportunity to place candy corn in there. Dan says, I can eat like two candy corn and then I'm done till next year. Dan, I, I said something very similar tonight. I, I can eat a handful. In 1898, the homespun recipe for the candy had been adopted by the uh, Golitz Candy Company. So what was something that was very like, you know, grassroots, it sounds like, got adopted by a company who then maybe I, I industrialized the manufacturing process on some level. Um, so so. The recipe went to this candy company, which quickly eclipsed the uh, Wonderly as the primary purveyor of the faux corn. Despite the sudden adoption by large candy conglomerates, the process for creating candy corn remained remarkably labor intensive. Who would have thought? So it's actually a labor intensive process. After mixing a cavity cocktail, I love this dude's writing a cavity cocktail of sugar, corn syrup, fondant, marshmallow, and water. That's what's in candy corn. So you got, right, so you definitely can taste the fondant. That's the waxy feel that we're always thinking about with candy corn. Marshmallow, okay, so it's like impacted marshmallow, obviously corn syrup. So there legitimately is corn in in candy corn as corn syrup, which is not actually made from the kernels of the corn. It's made from made from is in candy corn is in fact, in fact. So in any case, this cavity cocktail of sugar, corn syrup, fondant, marshmallow and water. Uh, it well, it was a, a slurry of sorts would be dyed. One of the three candy corn hues, orange, yellow or white. So I wonder if it was a clear thing. That's crazy because you think that it's, you know, comes that way, but I guess not. Laborers would then take 45 pound buckets of the hot liquid candy and pour it into long rows of trays of kernel forms, like the shape of kernels, right? Uh, making three passes, one for each color of the corn i could see why this would be labor intensive that sounds ridiculously labor intensive uh once this backbreaking work was complete the molds would cool and the candy corn was unleashed upon the autumn the autumnal population i never heard that word autumnal population that's insane uh yuma d says visually the colors are reminiscent of the autumn season 
When it hits the store shelves, you know autumn Halloween season is upon us. Very true. Totally agree. Jody Ramon is in the house. Jody, how are you? He says, fangs, Jeff. I always like a few pumpkin candy corns when they're a little bigger. The wax isn't as bad. You know what we just realized, Jody? That wax is actually, it's fondant. <laughs> yes. High caliber of corn syrup. Exactly, Angus. Exactly. That's what it is, man. That's what it is. Um. So here we have some people making it. So imagine the painstaking labor of these little kernel cavity things, whatever, like these 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 molds and having to pour each color into the mold. I mean, it sounds it sounds crazy. That's for sure. Um, this candy corn factory burnt down in 1950 when the slurry vat burst into flames. Imagine being like scolded instead of by hot melted wax. It's hot melted corn syrup, candy corn, corn syrup. The agrarian America of the late 19th century embraced the sweet little treats that recalled the season's harvest time roots and farm fed lifestyle. In fact, candy corn became so popular during the candy season that confectioners even experimented with other vegetable form candies, such as candy pumpkins and turnips. We do see the candy pumpkins still exist. I do believe you get some uh, kernels, like some corn kernels for sure. You get a couple of different shapes. They do the candy apples now. There's a few varieties, but mostly they stick with those, those, those kernels, those corn kernels. Sabbath Gill says... Gotta love some candy corn, but sometimes it hurts my tummy. I think you're, I think that's all of us. You speak for all of us. Uh, I was just talking about this absolute vile candy corn that I have right here. It's called tailgate candy corn. It's hot dog flavored candy corn and hamburger flavored candy corn. Um, weird stuff, man. Weird, wacky, wild stuff, as they say, as Johnny Carson used to say. Um, Let's see here. Due to the slow, laborious candy creation process of the time, treats such as candy corn were only made from March to November. So the tide of candy corn would only wash across the nation around the time of Halloween. Hence the uh, extricable link between the holiday and the candy. As I believe Yuma said this uh, above, just it makes you feel like the holiday is here, right? Uh, Brian says, like corn, enjoy it a second time. Har, 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 har. Um, Sabbath says, uh, whoa, they have come a long way in the world of candy corn. They sure have, man. <laughs> they, they sure have. They're, they're, they're looking to uh, reinvent the wheel always, I guess. That's what they're trying to do. Okay, let's keep, let's keep moving on as we talk about candy corn here. Um, Look at this uh, advertisement. So you can get a pound bag for 25 cents. If you're, you know, if you, if you could see this where, where we're at here in the thing. Buttery flavored mellow cream candy corn in its familiar three colors, approximately 360 pieces to the pound. The candy all children love to nibble on, nibble on all year long. That is cool, man. What a cool advertisement really makes you nostalgic for the past, I guess. At least maybe the good parts of the past, I should say. DLW says, salted corn is one thing, but candy corn with a burger and sausage flavor? Sugary, isn't that disgusting? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. And I tried it so that you don't have to. You are welcome. I'll, I'll drop that video tomorrow in light of our discussion about candy corn. How you doing, Cast and Blast? How, Cast and Blast says, howdy. I say howdy right back with the peace sign. Um, and since we're at that time in the show, roughly, I mean, we're a little few minutes early. Let me tell you, there, besides can, candy corn can get sticky. And you know what else sticks like candy corn? You know what else gets really sticky? Stickers. And I'll tell you, you know who um, sponsors this channel? Riotstickers.com. That's where we get all of our sticker needs. As you can see here, they have we have vinyl stickers, and they just do Sharpie Riot. He does the best job. Look, he, he took my logo. He did this banner that's right behind me, too. As you can see right here, you can see this banner. Uh, he took my logo. He put it on the sticker. I stick the stickers wherever I need to stick them. And I'll tell you something. The vinyl, it holds against sunlight, against the elements. Haven't really gotten to test these out against the snow, but the rain. Oh. 
I mean, rain shows no match for riot sticker stickers. So if you've got an image, if you got something that you got to promote on a sticker, go to riotstickers.com. Link is in the description and uh, check out what they offer. Personable, easy to work with. Um, they'll help you, you know, they'll give you pointers and help you get your, your print to be the best that it could be. Uh, let's watch the 60 seconds spiel right now. And we're back. Ha ha ha. Okay, let's keep going through this. So we saw this advertisement. We have Barnacle Bill says, Did you review the Dream World Coke yet? Spoilers, it's peach flavored. Ah, so I did review the Dream World Coke. I don't know if that review dropped already. If it did, go check it out. We could, I could not put my finger on what I was tasting. So it was a peach flavor. How about that? Angus says he wants haggis flavored candy corn. That sounds absolutely horrid. If it ain't Scottish, it's crap, apparently, says Daniel. <laughs> Black candy corn devil. Ravner says, I want a dream cola, cola to hell with candy corn. Uh, Ravner, go check out that review if it's if it's up. I think it's up on the channel. We, we talked about dream cola. It's I didn't think it was all that. I'd rather talk about candy corn, to be honest with you. Um, Sabbath says, this is getting me into the spooky mood. How do you celebrate Halloween, Jeff? As, as, <laughs> as best as I possibly can. No, we do decorations. Of course, um, you know, we go to the pumpkin patch. I live right near sleepy hollow. And so we go over to sleepy hollow, we go to the old Dutch cemetery. We watch the legend of sleepy hollow. Of course, um, we do, uh, I put up decorations. I, I think I already said that. And I watch a lot of horror movies. As a matter of fact, um, if you might not remember from last year, but I did 31 days of Halloween where I watched 31 horror movies and I reviewed them all. It's a review a day. It's a marathon. It's, it's very labor intensive, but it's so much fun. And um, so check back here on the channel for those reviews. We'll be, we'll be talking about movies every day. And um, not that we don't do that already. So yeah, that's a lot of fun. That is a lot of fun. Would Dream World Coke mix well with Southern Comfort? I don't know. You are asking the wrong guy, to be honest. Uh, let's keep reading, shall we? Uh, candy corn remained a stalwart product for companies throughout the 20th century, even as other candy trends came and went. As far as what candy corn is made out of now, the simple recipe remains unchanged. Although the strong men with the buckets of sugar were eventually replaced by industrial machines, so it's not labor intensive anymore, which now heartlessly crank out all hollows tears year round. Uh, breaking its bond, but we don't have, there's no like Santa Claus candy corn is there i mean maybe i feel like i'm surprised that they don't do that you know you you would think we would get some santa claus candy corn we should we should at least we, as as angus said we get the easter candy corn you know um sahara is asking have i watched Dahmer yet i have not watched Dahmer yet and i i'll take a quick aside just to say i may or may not watch it i am not sure because i have uh, I'm going to sound like such like a like a like a doof for saying this, but like I, I had a problem with tr uh, true life, uh, true crime stuff. Um, I, I just I'm weird about that. It has to be done. It has to be done in a really specific 
way. Like, uh, here's my thing about true crime. I can watch true crime when it's done with like the right amount of respect. And I know that sounds kind of stupid, but it's just how I feel, man. Like, I feel like, you know, these are real things that happen to real people and they have to be treated the right kind of way. And so, and I just can't get past that. That's really tough for me. Um, like for instance, I saw what's that? The girl next door, Jack Ketchum's the girl next door, which is brutal if you haven't seen it. And, you know, my problem with that movie, it's not, I don't know if it's a problem, but like, it's hard to watch because I'm going, that really happened to somebody like, and here I am watching it. How am I taking it in? Am I watching it because I'm treating it like a horror movie or am I watching it as like me, like bearing witness to the atrocities that happened to this very real person who had very real feelings and left this world in like the one of the darkest ways possible. And um, I've been reading a little bit about the Dahmer series, and I've heard that like a lot of the victims' families are like really, really annoyed and angry by it. I've also heard that the Dahmer series is really well done which really piques my curiosity. I heard it's really brutal and I'm a big fan of Evan. What's his name? Evan, the guy, the guy playing Dahmer. I love that guy from American Horror Story. He's great. And so I guess it's kind of like an American crime story that this Dahmer thing. So I kind of want to watch it. I, I do, but you know, uh, like I said, I, I haven't decided yet. I'm, I'm, I'm on the fence. Uh, I think, I think an example of something that really does it right even it's, though it's incredibly graphic and brutal. I mean, graphic and brutal, way more so than I think anything that maybe Dahmer even portrays. If you've ever seen Megan is Missing, which is a weird sort of thing where it's actually, it's true crime because it's based on things that really happened, but they sort of fictionalized, they fictionalized the, the particular incident, but it's based on four true cases. And it's about the horrors of the internet. And on one hand, I feel like every teenage kid in middle school should watch Megan is Missing. And on the other hand, I feel like that would also be like constitute like, like you shouldn't. Like it, it would be really bad to show it to them, uh, really traumatizing. So I don't know. So long story short, I have not watched Dahmer yet. I may watch it. I may not. I'm weird about that stuff. I'm weird, like, you know, prime example. You know why I loved Once Upon a Time in Hollywood so much? Because they didn't go the way that every single Manson thing goes. You know, they gave, they showed respect. They showed, they honored Sharon Tate. And I love that. I loved seeing that. It was the best part of the movie for me for something that was otherwise so like one of the darkest things in our pop culture, the Manson story. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I'm weird about that. Maybe I'll watch it. Maybe I won't. I'll let you know if I do, I'll probably do a show about it. If I watch it, we'll see. We'll see. As I said, I'm gearing up 31 days of Halloween. Once that starts like every day, the, the, I'm getting all my shows out now. Like I'm watching the handmaid's tale and stuff. I'm getting all those shows out. Cause once I start on the horror movies, uh, here's the, the way it works. <coughs> I have to watch a minimum of 31 movies in 31 days. I can skip a day as long as I make up that movie. I have to try and watch things I've never seen before, particularly if I can help it. And uh, I can watch as many movies as I want, but it has to be a minimum of 31 movies for 31 days of Halloween. So my personal best was 62 movies. I did 62 movies in 31 days. I didn't do reviews for them, how, or at least I didn't do video reviews. I do intend to try and break my record of 31 movies and do a more than 31 reviews. The reviews are very short. It's like 10 minutes at most, like five to 15 minutes at most, like in, somewhere in that marker. You could see what I did last year. It's just me talking head, jump cut, you know, just talking stream of consciousness thoughts about the films. So if that's something you enjoy, keep your eyes peeled on this channel because we're going to be doing that. We need a horror movie based on the candy corn factory fire. That, yeah, that would probably, uh, that would be nuts. Uh, Colonel's fall to earth, pan heats down. <laughs> Am I a fan of Dawn of the Dead? Am I a fan of Dawn of the Dead? Are you kidding me? I freaking love Dawn of the Dead. Um, of course, 78 forever. However, I do love the remake. And I think the remake, the opening 10 minutes of the remake are some of the finest 
opening of any movie I've seen ever. I was on the edge of my seat, so terrified watching that. Has anyone seen the new Monster Monsters by Rob Zombie? Daniel, I have not. I'm probably going to skip that one. It looks not it does not look like my cup of tea. I'm already very weary of Rob Zombie in general, you know. Yeah, oh thank you. His name is Evan Peters. Thank you, Sahara. Evan Peters, that's right. He, I love that guy. If anything, that would be the thing that convinces me to really like take the dive and watch Dahmer. It's just, it's hard, man. It's hard when you know it's like that really happened to somebody. They're 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 writing this based on like 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 police documents. You know what I'm saying? It's a true story. Like that's heavy, man. It's easy. It's easy to watch Jason cut off some teenager's head. It's easy to watch Freddy Slash. It's easy to watch Michael Myers. It's hard when it's like a person that did something to a very real person. What's up, Vampiro? How you doing? Like Danzig's movie reviews from Flipside. Yes, Daniel, very si uh, very similar to that, although that those were actual movie reviews from Glenn Danzig. These will just be me talking from my perspective, which I did a little bit in that as well. Uh, by the way, the back end of those Danzig movie reviews, there's about, I think I have like, 16 or 17 more they're all available to the youtube members and the patreon members right now those will drop probably in october as well i'll time them out they'll come out one every day something something like that um sabbath says i saw the original dawn of the dead when i was a kid and i'm sort of jealous that they had the whole mall to themselves i mean it's not like the best i mean it's literally i i want an hbo max series give me the hbo like prestige drama show of dawn of the dead in the mall you know for like five seasons make it five seasons long and then like the last season is when the bikers break in the first season is them getting to the mall so we don't even get to the mall until the end of the first season maybe like the season finale the next three seasons are them in the mall and then the final season is them uh, getting stormed and sieged by the bikers and the aftermath, right? So maybe at the end of so at the end of season four, the siege begins, and then the aftermath of the siege or the siege ends at the beginning of season five, and then the rest of it is the aftermath of what happens to them, the the survivors, and that sort of thing, and gives us like a nice long epilogue instead of what we got in the actual dawn of the dead movie which is fine too um how fun would that be though right like just give us like a five five season arc dawn of the dead start to finish soup soup to nuts man sabbath thinks that would be cool vampiro is excited that the misfits are coming to dallas that's awesome i hope you get to see them and have fun um winston says i agree with you about the Dahmer show i feel the same although Horror punk band singing about true crime stuff sometimes. Yeah. And I think it's lame. I think it's lame that they do that. Like, you know, people like to talk about Albert Fish. Like there's like songs dedicated to Albert Fish. You know what Albert Fish did? I'm not even going to go look it up. I'm not going to tell you what he did. I mean, like, why would anybody want to give oxygen to a guy like Albert Fish? You know what I'm saying? Like, that's my problem. Give give oxygen to Dawn of the Dead, man. That's what I'm saying. Uh, I have not started watching House of the Dragon yet. I'm going to let it finish up. I probably won't start it till November. I probably won't start till November. Let me finish this thing about the candy corn, and then we'll we're, we're gonna we'll wrap it up. So we are got we got so off topic here. I love doing this. I really need to do more just free form shows. Um, in any case, breaking its bond to Halloween, Candy Corn is now produced for a number of holidays in rainbow of abominations, such as the red and green reindeer corn. Okay, so they do make the Santa Claus corn or whatever. They call it reindeer corn or the pastel rabbit corn, as Angus was saying. Uh, but no matter the coloration, the recipe... Whoopsies, we where did you lose me? Where did you lose me? Um, I'll just read that part again. Hold on one second. Breaking its bond, Halloween. Uh, breaking its bond to Halloween. Candy corn is now pro uh, produced for a number of holidays in 
a rainbow of abominations such as the red and green uh, reindeer corn or the pastel rabbit corn. But no matter the coloration, the recipe remains the same. The waxy sweetness of its frontier roots will continue to haunt Halloween candy bowls long after all the other treats have gone. It is the cockroach of Halloween candies. <laughs> Uh, let's take a look at some uh, some facts. I see people talking about Slayer, Dead Skin Mask. I'm not a Slayer guy. What is Dead Skin Mask about? I don't even know. Sound sounds like something Ed Geenish, if you ask me. But I I don't know. All right, let's go to. Hold on one second. Let's find us. We already did that one here. All about candy corn. Let's read some candy corn facts. Shall we? October 30th is National Candy Corn Day. How about that? Just clear that out. Candy corn is not just for Halloween anymore. Right, we already read that. In recent years, several additional flavors of candy corn have been introduced, including classical tastes like peppermint, pumpkin spice, red velvet cake, and fruit punch. More recently, some very unusual flavors have debuted. Hot dog, hamburger, green beans, roasted turkey, and stuffing to name a few. So I really got to try the green beans and roasted turkey and stuffing because I actually could tell you, I actually could tell you the difference between hot dog flavored candy corn and hamburger flavored candy corn. And, and as soon as this is done, I'm going to tomorrow, I'll drop it. That episode where I talk about this disgusting, disgusting candy corn, which but the ice cream candy corn was actually really good. The uh, vanilla ice cream Let's see if there's anything else to read about candy corn before we wrap this sucker up. We already know where it was invented and how it was made. What are the types of candy corn? Fun facts. Uh, candy corn is not the treat's original name. We know it's chicken feed. More than 17,000 tons of candy corn are produced each year. How about that? Candy corn is one of the better for you Halloween candies. It can contains roughly... 28 grams of sugar and is only 148 calories per heaping and it's fat free. So apparently it's that's considered healthy. This is interesting. It has a long shelf life. Once the package is open, store candy corn covered away from heat and light at room temperature. It should last three to six months. If unopened, the packaged candy corn will last about nine months. Candy corn desserts, whether you want to include store-bought candy corn into Halloween sweets or you want to make your own version of the tricolor treat, we have found a few fun, oh, okay, these are just recipes. <clears throat> I mean, you have candy corn M&Ms. I know they made candy corn dots. They make, they make, I mean, there's, we got a lot, we got, got a lot of stuff, got a lot of, a lot of candy corn stuff going on. Um, Hold on real quick. Let's. We have one more thing to look at here. We already read that. I'm, this is, I'm sorry, you can't see the articles. I'm not going to pop these back up. I might as well just scroll through them. <clears throat> this is interesting. Uh, there were no sweet hybrids in those days, writes uh, Samira Kawash, author of Candy, A Century of Panic and Pleasure in the Atlantic. Corn was coarse and cheap and not very tasty. Good food for pigs and chickens. It wasn't until wartime wheat shortages in 1917 that any that any but the poorest Americans would have considered corn flour, cornmeal, or cornbread acceptable foodstuffs. Even after World War I, candy corn maintain, <clears throat> maintained its association with chickens. Uh, packages of uh, Gulitz's candy corn from the 1920s displayed a rooster and the motto, King of the Candy Corn Fields. Hmm. In the first half of the 20th, uh, we have candy corn Oreos. Remember those? They did that as well. Uh, in the first half of the 20th century, candy corn became a common penny candy. These were the types of treats kids could buy in bulk for very little money. Kids most likely thought of them as candies to eat year round. And then the special ones get uh, to get on Halloween, which wasn't yet specifically associated with candy. Candy corn might appear at Halloween parties, but also at celebrations for Thanksgiving and Easter. As Halloween became more and more dominated by the candy beginning in 1950s, candy corn increasingly became the candy for Halloween. There was a dramatic spike in October advertising of candy corn beginning in the 1950s, which makes perfect sense. 
you know, and we did a whole history deep dive on Halloween, the holiday. Check that out. That was a lot of fun. We also did one for, for Christmas too, right? Um, other kinds of candy were advertised for Halloween too, but they were advertised just as heavily during the rest of the year. Uh, today, while it's easy to find candy corn year round, wow, they do more than 35 million pounds of the candy every year. It's predominantly in October when on, on the 30th, National Candy Corn Day honors the original chicken feed treat. Hmm. Hmm. Well, how about that? Man, I was really glad I found that article tonight. I was like, oh, we got to do something for Monday. What are we going to do? And that just, that hit the spot. Did it not? That's interesting. My girlfriend just told me that there's Thanksgiving dinner flavored. Yes, that's like my, my white whale Sabbath gills. My white whale is to find said candy corn. Um, that's going to conclude tonight's show. I hope you enjoyed it. So on Thursday, I might do a show before shout out to Dan who gives out full size Snickers on Halloween. That's what's up. That's what's up. Yes. Chicken feed is not a very marketable name. They had to change it. <laughs> Metamorphosis, lycanthropy, pozunt, inquam. Candy corn, candy corn. And you see people making like corn cobs out of candy corn. Um, This Thursday, Bob Rose, my good friend Bob Rose, he's going to be joining me. We're doing top five threequels. What does that mean? It means we're going to be examining our favorite five third sequels in horror franchises. So think stuff like Scream 3 or Army of Darkness and stuff. Bob is making his list. I'm making my list. We don't know what's going to be on each other's list. That's half the fun is revealing them to each other. Join us. That's going to be a very movie-centric uh, discussion on Thursday. I believe we're going to be doing that at 9 o'clock. We might go live uh, on Wednesday, maybe tomorrow. One last thing I'll say. I... Um, you might be noticing that I'm going doing these shorts a lot on YouTube, and I apologize if they're like like gumming up your feed or whatnot. I am just trying to experiment and figure out how these uh, YouTube shorts work, and uh, it's just it's good for the channel. And yeah, man, um, sorry about that. If you don't like seeing it, uh, some some of you don't seem to mind, but. Others, I'm not so sure. Um, what else was I going to say? I think that's about it. I think we're going to... Let's get out of here, man. Halloween back in the early 80s. Long Beach, California was nuts. I bet everyone would go out the day before, too, on Devil's Night, especially uh, especially around the, the dawn of punk, right? You had, like, all those crazy gangs and whatnot. Come November 1st, my two brothers and I would have our, our parents' Chevy wagon filled with candy. Hell, yeah. It would fill a full dress, dresser and last through Easter. Hey, go to the candy dresser. What, what do we have? What do we have at the candy dresser? Okay. All right. Now I'm putting a pin in this conversation. No more, guys. I love chatting with you, but we got to fly. We got to fly. Um, Like I said, Irivan, it's out now on Patreon. Part two, it's not going to be on YouTube. Part two will not. Part four will be. Part three will also be exclusive to YouTube members and Patreons only. What is the Patreon membership? Patreon is the best of the best, if you ask me. YouTube membership is great, too. Patreon's my favorite. Um, so check it all out. Peace and hair grease. Thanks for talking Halloween candy with me. We'll see you next time. Hey, guys, what's going on? It's Jeff. So I've decided to make a Patreon. What is Patreon? I don't know how to define a Patreon. Let me look it up. Patreon is a membership platform that makes it very easy for creators to get paid for the things that they're already creating. I want to do it full time. I want this to be my full time job. In my efforts to make that happen, I've set up this platform. Is it going to work? Is it going to be successful? I don't know, but I would rather try and crash and burn than not try at all. The goal is to create enough passive revenue so that I can continue to do this full time 
uninterrupted. Why? Because I love to do this. I love creating content. I love making videos. I love shooting films. I love doing podcasts. In case you couldn't tell, I love to talk and I never shut the fuck up. <laughs> So right now, I've kept the Patreon incredibly simple. There's two tiers, and that may change in the future. The Murdergram is a simple way to extend support for all of the hours and hours of free content on the channel for nothing more than a dollar. 38 cents goes to Patreon. What's a buck 38, eh? It's less than a cup of coffee. But it's a great way that you can show support for very little effort. When you divide that dollar 38 by the hours and hours and hours of time spent listening to this endless drivel of content, the dollar cost average works out. Next up is the YouTube casualty for $6.66. <laughs> the YouTube casualty is loaded to the gills. Enjoy the archive ad-free as well as ad-free early access to special docu-style podcast videos, music reaction commentaries, and the like a month before they drop on YouTube, loaded with ads, I might add. You're also going to get exclusive content and behind-the-scenes content that is not available on YouTube or anywhere else. So you get to peek behind the veil. And believe me, there's a couple of choice pieces. Most of all, more than anything, whether you join the Patreon or not, I just want to thank each and every one of you that comes to the channel, that watches all the shows, that leaves comments, that participates that subscribes, that's really the most important thing. This is just trying to find a way to earn a living as an artist. And with that, thank you for my TED Talk. Join the Patreon, because we need you! 66 cents.